Another type of problem that you might see on the CCO Manitex specialty exam is a gross load problem. I'd like to give you an example of how we'd go about solving a gross load problem if we see one on the CCO exam. And I say if we see one, you probably will see at least one, maybe two gross load problems. Not a lot of difference between gross load problems and net capacity problems. The formula is different, uh, as we'll see as we go along. And the goal of a gross load problem is to identify the total loading on the crane. The total loading on the crane is going to be the object weight plus the deductions. Your deductions are going to be your stowed boom, I mean, I'm sorry, your stowed jib, your block, your ball, your rigging, and so on. With the Manitex, you might see the hose reel as a, as a deduction also. Well, let's go ahead and jump into this problem. As we go along, I'll identify some more unique things or slightly different things about gross load problems. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. First step, what is the question asking for? Crews are setting a chiller unit weighing 8,175 pounds. What is the gross load? What is the maximum radius for safely lifting and placing this load at 26 feet of main boom? Now that's another uh, difference you're likely to see with the gross load problem. Sometimes they're not asking you just to calculate the gross load. They also want you to identify what is the maximum reach. You know, how far can you boom down? What is the maximum reach that you can go out to and still be within chart capacity? Uh, and this question is asking for that. Some gross load problems may just ask you for the maximum radius. You know, how far out can you reach with this particular load? They, they may not even care about the, the actual gross load. They just ask you about the maximum radius. Now, to decide the maximum radius, you do have to first calculate the gross load. So, but let's go ahead and continue. Okay, it's a gross load problem. We're looking for the maximum radius and the gross load. So, let's go ahead, go ahead and write down our formula for gross load. Gross load, GL, is the abbreviation I use. Gross load equals the load weight, or the object weight, plus deductions. Yeah, we can go ahead and plug in our object weight, or our load weight, 8,175 pounds, which leaves us with all we need are the deductions. So to make sure that we're keeping track of our deductions, let's go ahead and draw out our configuration. We have a 26 foot main boom, 10 foot radius. We have and we're getting this information again from our data table. Uh, 26 feet of main boom, 10 foot radius. Have a hose reel, which is going to be a deduction. And that's the symbol I like to use for a hose reel. Go ahead and abbreviate that HR. I think it's a good idea to go ahead and, and label everything on your diagram. Helps, it helps you keep track as you're working through the problem. Okay, we have our hose reel. Going up to this column for our jib, we have a 23 foot jib stowed. So let's go ahead and put that on our diagram. Again, I like to use a upside down triangle to represent my jib. Now, the actual deduction weights for the hose reel and the jib. We'll have to go back in the load chart notes here in a second and find those. We're just getting everything uh, drawn out. Get all of our configuration drawn out. Okay, moving on down, we have a single shiv block, with two parts line. And you don't have to be real particular about how you draw it, just as long as it's clear to you when you, when you take the exam. Single shiv block, SS for single shiv, 
and we don't have to draw in all the parts of lines. It's just a good idea. I use a 2x to indicate that we have two parts line. Again, we don't know our deduction weights yet. We'll find that here in a second. Moving on down, there's no ball. We've got rigging that weighs 17 pounds. And now that is given to us in the data table. So we can go ahead, go ahead and write in our deduction weight for the rigging. That's right there in front of us in the data table. Okay, now let's find the deduction weights for the other implements. Okay, starting from the top, we've got our 23-foot jib. Now to find the jib deduction weight, that is in the main load chart. And the deduction weight for the jib depends on how far the main boom is extended. If the main boom is extended out further, the deduction weight for the jib is going to be less. So what we need to do to find the deduction weight for the jib in, in the load chart is find this row at the very bottom. Then we need to find the column representing our boom extension. We're at 26 foot boom, so there's our column. So we go down to this row and we see that our deduction for the 23 foot stowed jib is 480 pounds. So let's go ahead and write that in. Now if we had 38 feet of boom, our deduction is going to be 330 pounds. 48 feet, 260 pounds, and so on. Okay, now we have two parts wire rope. One of the great things about the Manatex that make them make this test a little easier, we don't have to worry about wire rope deductions. There is no wire rope deduction for the Manatex, so we'll go ahead and put a zero in there. Okay, let's. Uh, find the deduction weight for a single shiv block and here are here's a table that has most of the deductions in it everything except for the the jib deduction so single shiv load block 260 pounds okay now we need to find our hose reel deduction. Hose reel, 190 pounds. Okay, go back through our table, make sure we've got everything. All of our deductions, we've got our hose reel. We've got our jib. We've got our single shift block. And we've got our rigging. So that is everything that we need. Now we can total everything up. We got 480 for our jib plus 260 for the single shift block plus 17 for our rigging plus 190 for the hose reel. Total deductions, 947 pounds. Bring this up and plug it into our formula. Now we can add the 947 that we just calculated for our deductions to the load weight or object weight of 8,175. That gives us a gross load of 9,122 feet. I'm sorry, 9,122 pounds. I'm thinking about the radius. Because now the next part of this, what is our maximum radius? Um, how far out can we reach and still be within capacity? 
let's go to our load chart and we'll work out how we do that. And again, we're, we're, we're not extending the boom, we're keeping the boom at 26 feet. So to reach out further, we're gonna reach out further by booming down. So really we're talking about how far can we boom down, how far can we reach out uh, with a gross load of 9,122 pounds. And the way to do this is we find our boom length column, 26 feet, we start working our way down. 34,000 pounds is our capacity at five feet, so we're good there. Your capacity in this column, your capacity, this column here, needs to be greater than your gross load. As long as this capacity is greater than your gross load, you're good. 24,000, we're good at eight feet. 20,000 capacity, we're good at 10 feet. 17,000, 12 feet. 14,310, we're good at 15 feet and 10,490, we're good at 20 feet. We can go all the way out to 20 feet radius. Now there is no capacities beyond 20 feet with a 26 foot boom. So this is as far as we can go. Our maximum radius with 26 feet of main boom is 20 feet. Okay, let's, let's do this just as an example. We found our problem here, or we, we solved our problem. The correct response is 9,122 pounds. Maximum radius is 20 feet. Let's say we had a uh, gross load of 9,122 pounds and a 38 foot main boom. So we could do the same thing. We're good at, we're good at eight feet. We're in the 38 foot column. We're good at eight feet. We're good at 10 feet. We're good at 20 feet, but 20 feet is as far as we can go. Once we go, we have 10,350 pound capacity at a 20 foot radius with 38 feet of boom. Our load is 9,122 pounds, so we're under that 10,350. But when we try to go out five more feet, we're, we don't have the capacity. At 25 foot radius, 38 feet of boom, our capacity is 8,310 pounds, and our load is, is, is above that. So the maximum radius at 38 feet of boom would be 10,350 pounds. Uh, at 48 feet of boom, look at it, 9,122 pounds. We want to be below 9,122 pounds. So at 10 feet, we're good. We have 14.6 capacity. At 12 feet, we have 12,680 pounds of capacity. At 15 feet, we have 10,500 pounds capacity. So we go out to 20. At 20, with a 48 foot of boom extension, we only have 8,160 pounds. So if we were at 48 feet of boom, our maximum radius would be 15 feet. All right, well, I think that pretty much uh, provides our illustration for a gross load problem. Uh, good luck on the exam. Remember, practice, practice, practice.